Inferno. Canto 25. The blasphemy of Fuchi. He is seized by serpents and endeavoring to escape is pursued by Cassius in the form of a centaur who is described with a swarm of serpents on his haunch and a dragon on his shoulders breathing forth fire. Our poet then meets with the spirits of three of his countrymen, two of whom undergo a most marvelous transformation in his presence. His speech thus closed, the thief insultingly pointed his hands in scornful jester vile, exclaiming, Take them, God, they are for thee. I from that instant was the serpent's friend, for one about his throat or wreathed its coil, as though it said, No more shall thou offend. Another clasped his arms, and with a chain of many a fold so tightly bound them down that all attempt to move them was in vain. Pistoia, ah, Pistoia! Why forbear to bow thee in the dust, since thou art grown my rife in crime that in thy fathers were? No soul throughout the murky rounds of hell towards God beheld I manifest such pride. Not he from Thebes' high battlements who fell, he fled nor spoke again. Then did I see a centaur coming, full of rage, who cried, This impious foul blasphemer, where is he? More snakes were hissing on his turgid hip than in Marima's marsh may be surveyed, in reaching upwards to his very lip. Behind the neck, upon his shoulder, lay a dragon fierce, with ample wings outspread, breathing forth fire on all who crossed his way. Cacus is this, my faithful master said, who in the cave of Aventine erewhile a lake of blood full many times hath made. Not with his brethren doth he onward high, robber accursed, since he with secret guile drove off the mighty herd which pastured nigh, but ceased his deeds of evil when were dealt. A hundred blows by the Herculean mace, though scarcely ten perhaps the robber felt. While thus he spake, the centaur fled, and lo, three souls beneath us came up rapid pace, whom neither I nor Virgil saw till now. When on a sudden, who are ye, they cry, wherefore we ceased discoursing as we went, and fixed on them alone our eager eye. I knew them not, but so it did befall, and often happens by some accident that one had need another's name to call, exclaiming, Where can Sianfu be concealed? Whereat my guide's attention to engage, straightway my finger to my lip I held. No wonder, reader, shouldst thou disbelieve, what now will be unfolded in my page, for I who saw it scarce can credit give. Whilst upon them mine eyes attentive hung, a serpent with six feet like lightning sped full in the front of one, and to him clung. His middle feet he round his paunch did wreath, and o'er his arms his foremost feet outspread, then fixed in either cheek his savage teeth, stretched o'er the thighs the hinder feet extend, and twixt them both protruded to his tail, which backwards turned along the reins remained. So closely ne'er did circling ivy blind, an aged tree as round those members fell, the horrid beast his own dire form entwined. Then were they mingled, in as they had been of melted wax in selfsame hues arrayed, and which was which no longer could be seen, like as when paper burns, there glides before the advancing flame a brown and dingy shade, which he is not black and yet is white no more. In wonder lost the other two looked on, and cried, Agnello, oh, how altered thou! Behold, thou art not either two or one, the twain already to a single head. Where changed, one face appeared instead of two. For no distinction could be now surveyed. Two arms were visible where four had been. The thighs, the legs, the belly, and the chest became such limbs as never yet were seen. All vestige of the former shape was gone nor one nor two the unsightly frame expressed, and in such guise it moved full slowly on, as underneath the dog-star's scorching ray the lizard darting swift from hedge to hedge appears like lightning if he cross the way. So to the stomach of the other twain a viper came with furious heat and rage, livid and black like a pepper grain. And in that part whence first our nurturement is dawn, he sudden pierced one spirit vile, then prostrate fell in all his foul extent. Him viewed the transfixed spirit, but was dumb, and standing motionless, he yawned the while, 
as if by sleep or fever overcome. He on the serpent, it on him did look, one from his wound, the other hard and strong, breathed from his mouth, and mingling met the smoke. Now lit Nasidius and Cebulus fate, no more he made a boast in Lucan's song. But let him list the tale I here relate. Silent be Ovid, though his poetry changed Arethusa to a fount of yore, and Cadmus to a snake, I have no jealousy. For ne'er two natures changed he face to face, so that the, they both were gifted with the power, each other's form and substance to embrace. Their limbs in such exact accordance meet, that to a fork his tail the serpent cleft. The wounded shade united both his feet, connected each with each, the legs and thighs so closely clung that soon, combined, they left no trace of junction to our wondering eyes. The cloven tail that shape did now assume, lost by the other, soft one's skin was wrought. Meanwhile, the others hardened in its room. Arms into armpits entered, strange to view. And the two feet, which of the beast were short, extended as the others shorter grew. His hinder feet, now twisted into one, the undergo mysterious change were seen. And to two feet the others altered soon. Meanwhile, the smoke with its dense vapor veils, both with fresh hues, and generates a skin upon one part, from which the other peels. The serpent rose, the man fell down below, still on each other all the while they gazed, their eyes alone unaltered, to his brow backward the one his baleful visage drew, and thence from the superfluous matter raised, on either side the ears spontaneous grew, that superfluity which still remained. A nostril to the impious face was made, and the two limp their proper size attained. He who lay prost now his face, contracting both his ears within his head, e'en as a snail draws on his horns apace. The tongue which undivided freely spoke divideth, while the forked tongue anon unites, and straightway vanishes the smoke. The soul transformed into a brute now flies hissing along the veil, the other one foams at the mouth, as in the rear he hies. Scornful he turned on him, his shoulders new, and to another spake. As I have done, let Buoso crawl now his way pursue. Such changes did the seventh round present, and in the novelty excuse I find, if here my tongue decline embellishment. And though confusion overwhelmed mine eyes, and much bewildered also was my mind, these shades could not escape so secretly, but well I marked that Puccio he was one, and of the three first comers, he alone among them all no change had undergone, the other's death though gavel dost atone.